With the Los Angeles Times, Lindsay Theory at the Rose Bowl, joined by columnist Bill Plaschke and beat reporter Gary Klein. UCLA defeating USC 38 to 20. The Bruins a third straight victory over the Trojans. Bill, I know you and I are happy in the sense that we predicted this. Happy? Who's happy? Well, we We're predicted happy. this. We predicted see, this. see a team just carnage and ravaged. No, we are not it. happy to see that. Own, from our own town, carnage and ravaged. Somebody was going to lose here. We're just happy right, that correct. we predicted yes, we're the happy. correct outcome. But I don't think anybody thought we, it would happen like this. Nobody thought you, the game was never close. I mean, it was at, but from nine minutes left in the third quarter, it was done. It was over with. UCLA died dominated him on USC all, fans were leaving on all four yeah you in fact USC by the end of the game USC fans were gone I've never seen in fact a larger disproportionate amount of UCLA versus USC fans in any of these games at the Rose Bowl this was, place was all blue and all the Cardinal gold were gone and USC just got steamrolled and I don't think anybody thought it would be like that Gary you predicted that USC would win <laughs> what do you think went wrong so for the Trojans are you sad <laughs> I predicted that USC would correct the mistakes that have. Of course, the Gary's oh, back. Yeah, on the yeah, Gary's yeah. back on the fence. Half, but they didn't even get a chance. They didn't even get a chance tonight. That early interception by Anthony Saro, it looked like okay, this is a different USC mm -hmm. team coming out on defense, making a play, putting the team out in front. But that was about the only play they made all night. And uh, Brett Hundley, you know, USC did a good job controlling him as a scrambler. Unfortunately, they could not control his receivers, who took short passes, turned them into long gains. And as Bill said, I mean, it was it was a dominant performance. That score is not indicative of how that game went. So the John McKay Center has a mural that says, we own L.A. Jim Morris said last season in the Coliseum Tunnel, we own L.A. Bill. Who owns L.A.? Well, I know right? we don't. We don't. We don't make enough for that. I don't even rent L.A. Uh, no, Jim Moore definitely. I wrote tonight. What Morris said last year, his team said tonight. The Rose Bowl said tonight. The moment said tonight. They own L.A. I mean, I'm not saying it's you know it's forever or anything, but right now, three straight wins against three different USC coaches, two different USC quarterbacks by more than a 50 point, 60 point margin the last three years. I mean, it, it, the whole programs are going different directions. And you got to think, you got to wonder if USC is starting to think about UCLA and Jim Moore the way UCLA once thought about USC and Pete Carroll. Not that Moore and Carroll are the same, but you have to start thinking as long as Moore is here, they got these guys' number. Gary, the last three seasons you've seen UCLA take over. What do you think has been kind of the biggest margin that has widened over the last couple of seasons? I think it's just attitude. More than anything else, mm -hmm. UCLA, these UCLA teams the last few years are much more physical. They are much more confident. They are obviously no longer afraid of, yeah. of USC or what was rolling. I think what's going to be really interesting to watch, and we talked about this earlier this week, in terms of recruiting, the kids that came up that are playing at USC now always talk about Reggie Bush, Matt Liner, that era. We're getting further away from mm -hmm. that. And what kids are growing up seeing now so is... It's like John, the John David Booty era. <laughs> they're, they're seeing Brett Hundley... <laughs> I want to play for the Kiffin era. No. They're, no. They're, no seeing, okay, they're seeing Hundley beat U USC three times, yeah. convincingly. They're seeing toughness. They're seeing Jim Mora. So you have to think down the line, as of those recruits that are on the fence, are they going to start looking to Westwood much more often than they were looking to SC? And I think that's kind of the, the greatest thing that's gonna, that, that might come out of this. Now, quarterbacks kind of define who they are in this game. At least that's what we wrote in the Los Angeles Times earlier this week. Every day we wrote in the L.A. Times. Okay. Brett Hurley was in the cover every day. USC fans. Okay, Bill knows in. the question. Right, there you go. right in. How come Brett, Brett Hurley's not covered? I think Cody Kessler going into this game deserved equal footing for Brett Hurley. I thought he's having a every bit of good of a year. And tonight the difference was was unbelievable. He Cody didn't have the escapability. He missed on some passes. He got harassed. He was some people thought he was even even his needed to change his snap count. These guys were in on him so quickly. I just thought this showed that Cody Kessler and USC fans should be happy. He, obviously he's not going to go pro. He needs to come back for another year. You know, a lot of these guys need to come back for another year to get better. Gary, you talked to Cody this week. Do you think there was anything in the preparation that led to this performance this week by Kessler? Uh, no, I, I don't think there was necessarily anything problematic. And by the way, he was on the cover one day. Oh, the f oh. <laughs> oh fact me. check. But Excuse think, me. Fact I check. Think, I think what happened uh, tonight was US, UCLA, we talked all week about Leonard Williams, Sua Cravens, all these key defensive players for USC. I'll tell you, UCLA has a lot of good defensive players. Eric Kendricks, uh, Miles Jack, that defensive mm -hmm. line. I don't think that US, USC was really prepared for a team that they came into the game with only 16 sacks. They had six tonight. This was yeah. a team, a UCLA team, with Mora leading the way that turned it up.
Yeah. Oh, by the way, Gary, I was not cover more than either of those guys this week at the LA Times. Congratulations. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, Bill's still riding Thank high you. on his big story about Josh Shaw, who did play tonight Josh in, played. on defense and, and made a tackle on made a tackle on special teams. And Bill didn't even have to tackle him for an interview at the end. Yeah. He was gone. Okay. So Ed Orgeron was not kept around because he lost to UCLA and he lost to Notre Dame. Steve Sarkeesian's in his first season at USC. I don't think we're going to see him go anywhere. No. But what could happen to the staff? Somebody, you have to think if they lose to UCLA and Notre Dame, somebody something happens. There's changes in the staff. It always is over at USC. They don't they don't live like that. They have to make do something. If they got rid of Coach O after that, so the kind of year he had, and they got rid of him after this, somebody's going to lose their job. I mean, or somebody's going to get transferred or switched around or something. It'll be a coordinator. It'll be the coaching staff, something. So they're going to go bring a Sark in and say, you've got to make some changes because you this cannot happen again. What do you think is the biggest difference between this season's team and last season's team, Gary? USC? Or yeah, you USC. You know, it, it's hard to put a finger on it. It's a different kind of, uh, you know, makeup. Last year's team had a lot of those juniors that were going to leave, mm -hmm. go to the NFL, right or wrong decision. And there was so much turmoil last year that you couldn't really get a handle on, on which way it was going to go. Sarkeesian first year, you know, he's he's under pressure from fans. If they lose to Notre Dame, it's not going to be a good situation. But he's a coach that's going to be here for a few years. They're going to give him an opportunity to build a program. And I guess, you know, to get it back on the right track against UCLA. Because not only this year, last year, these were convincing victories. And in Los Angeles, when you lose to your rival, it stings for a long time. I thought it was fascinating. The game began, remember, before the game even began, there was a UCLA defensive stand. The walk-on wide yeah. receiver stood on the midfield. You know he has a logo. photo inside the press conference room, too, a big plastered photo of him. Is it really? Yeah, well, he I was, was about to tweet it. He was on the logo not letting the USC marching band come out and put their sword in there, and USC's going crazy. And then after the game, they had an offensive rush when they blitzed down. The players ran down and jumped in the stands with, the, with their fans. It was really a truly all we saw from USC was just them trudging off, trying to get away from this. as seen as like, like it was a car wreck, and they wanted to get away from the carnage. It was just awful. I usually like to get the last word, but Bill, that was perfect. All right, I'm going to let you have it tonight. That'll do it. <laughs> That'll do it for us from the Rose Bowl with columnist Bill Plaschke and beat reporter Gary Klein. I'm Lindsay Theory for the Los Angeles Times.